y'all. This is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast, encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto Albritton Studios, here's your host, Ricky. Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because it's all about Jesus living life on purpose with him. And typically when I say that intro, I never look at the guests because I'm like in the zone. You know, I'm like getting in my flow, <laughs> like my Holy Spirit. I'm like dialing into the Lord. Like, let's go. Let's broadcast your love alone, Jesus. Like, this is not about me dying to self. Like, you are the talent, Lord. And I was just looking at Mary Beth because she is our guest today, but she is totally into this, like doing the hands thing with me because you have to use your hands when you talk, correct? We are women. Yes. <laughs> How else do we talk? We are women and we are like very loud. Very animated. <laughs> We want you to feel what we're saying and you, the emphasis from the hands. You get me? Right? I get you. This is, so this should be a video, but it's not. But I mean, while we're talking, I just want you to know it's an octopus back here. Like we're, our arms are, are out. Hands are in the air, <laughs> spreading all over, all the different directions. <laughs> I mean, this is a, actually, you know what? This is a roller coaster ride. And that's typically how yeah. these conversations go. So like, we just need to know for you who's listening, are you fastened tightly to the roller coaster ride. I don't know if I am. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Okay. I love your energy so much. You do. You I mean, so when okay, and we're gonna get into it because I have to do your introduction first, but like when you are walking with the Lord today, it is an adventure. Like period. Bottom line. It's an adventure. Absolutely. Right? I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's an adventure. And if it's not an adventure, you're not doing it right. Doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because God, uh, he, he literally created a human and he is father God of Jesus. And he's our father too. And like, he made a human, him and Mary, like a woman who was a virgin and made a human. Like if that is not an adventure, There's I don't so know There's so much what. to be excited about. There is so much. Okay. So to your intro, Mary Beth Barrows, co-owner of Small Cakes, Yes, we're talking about cupcakes today. And she's a Pensacola native. And her sister, Naomi McIntosh, is the co-owner of Small Cakes as well. So it's a wonderful cupcake, cake, ice cream, dessert business here in Pensacola on Bayou Boulevard. Um, Y'all are just a wonderful blessing to our family. And uh, we're excited to have you here today. So well, thanks I'm for coming. I'm excited to be here. Yes. It's always fun to hang out. It's kind of different doing it with microphones on our faces. I I've know. never done that before. But okay, so it's kind of cool. This You just have to think like you're talking on the cell phone to your friend. Like that's like right now, the person who we're talking to, like they're just not talking back, which is like typical for my phone calls. It's like, they're let me. us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, telemarketer. It's not. It's not. We're just trying to introduce you to Jesus. So Mary Beth, um, co-owner of Small Cakes, like we said, tell us a little bit about the company that you co-own. Um, and then I, I want to dive into how God led you to start it. But just tell us a little bit about the company itself. Yeah. So actually, my husband and I and my sister and her husband, we wanted to team up together to do some businesses and we thought we would flip homes and um, use my husband's experience as a real estate attorney and my brother-in-law's experience as a realtor and then us wives would help decorate and flip homes well so many opportunities that we were hoping to do that for just kept falling through and then one day we actually came across a bakery that was existing and it wasn't doing so well and um, I talked to the girl at the front and I said, I'm so glad y'all are still open because all these bakeries and businesses are just shutting down. It was a you know rough economy at the time, sort of like now. And um, I went home and I told my husband and my brother-in-law and my sister, I said, let's, let's buy this bakery and flip it around. How fun would that be? And I actually thought they were gonna laugh me out of the room, but um, I think within a week, we had done it, we bought it. And um, it's been so much fun, such an adventure. We bought it without having ever worked in a bakery in our lives, which is crazy. 
And I don't know that I would even recommend that, but um, God really worked. <laughs> yeah. God really worked and showed us how to do. Um, he just taught us so much um, of patience and just the business stuff that goes on behind the scenes and the marketing that goes on behind the scenes and um, just the day to day dealing with um employees, which is challenging sometimes, sometimes awesome. And we had never really experienced any of those things. So it was very eye opening. Um, and then the Lord blessed it so much. We increased the sales uh, over a hundred percent, even in our first month. Wow. Um, and we're very grateful for that. And then um, it's continued to do um, better every year. So we're just so grateful for the experience and what it's taught us, um, both good things and bad things, hard things, easy things. Um, it's been very much um, a roller coaster of learning. And um, I don't know that we're still doing it right, but it's been neat learning and we'll continue to learn and try to keep it going and thriving as best that we can. So the interesting thing about what you're saying is that you were just living your life. See what I was talking about earlier with the whole adventure thing. So you're just living your life. You're going to this bake shop and you just talk to someone and now you have a bakery. Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> because it's like, what were we even thinking? Sometimes I'm like, I'm so sorry that I talked to Cinda buying this bakery. <laughs> it's so much work, but also so rewarding. Um, and, it, you know, even just having to learn how to talk to um, employees and looking at them as not employees, but as people. And um, we really try to um, exemplify Christ in how we love them and how we care for them and ask about their families and pray for them if they're sick or if they've had a death in the family. And so um, we look at them as part of the family and part of the whole team of the store and we couldn't do it without our staff. And we're so grateful for them. Um, and we're thankful for opportunities that God has given us in the community to, to give back um, to churches and hospitals and children's hospitals and, you know, sheriff's office, um, homeless people, um, just any way that we can give and serve. Um, we'd love to be able to do that as well. So you said, let's buy this bakery and flip it around. The question I ask every guest is how God is using you in this season. And then the second one is what Bible verse is encouraging you in this season. I just think it's so cool about how God is using you part is that this has been more than 10 years, right? How long? I, I, getting pretty close to that. I think probably somewhere around nine or, or eight. But really? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> we, we bought it right after our babies were born, which is even more crazy because we had twins. But um, people were probably thinking, what is wrong with them? They just had babies. They have other jobs. And now they bought a bakery. Maybe we need to put them in white straight jackets and, <laughs> and yeah. push them well. <laughs> it's really but, funny, though, that you say right after your babies were born. Um, I don't I mean, I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but I get that. Because right after our first one was born, I was really driven. No, right before he was born, I was really driven to do something that would like make an impact on his life in the future. Yeah. You know? And mm -hmm. then after our second one was born, I got more like focused on kingdom building stuff. Um, I mean, in those marketplace ministry roles, but also like in the... Um, in the act, like in this podcast, I was like, wow, this actually matters. Like this is like kingdom stuff. And this is the stuff where you're like dying to self to learn more about him, to be refined and to grow in Christ. And like, this is the stuff that, that matters. So like, I want to plant more seeds, spend more energy on this. That was how it was with the second one. So when you said that you bought it right after your babies were born, like I get that. I told it's weird. It's like this ambition that spurs in your heart that's not for yourself when you like when you have children you want something to do um you know to help in your kids life in their retirement right. or their college or or whatever and just set an example to them on you can do anything you know yeah. with christ it's true you can do anything with christ like god can do anything anything yeah. you know what is so crazy i have to share this story so like literally god just brought something up to me in college i remember a girlfriend. She was uh, a few years older than me. And I don't know if I was like struggling with finances or something, or I don't know why she said this, but she was like, you know, it's nothing for God to write a thousand dollar check and put it in the mail. And then she shared a story about her dad got a check in the mail one day. He was like, they were trying to make ends meet and they couldn't do it. I mean, family of four and um, somebody just mailed him a check out of the blue and God's put it on their heart to do that. That actually happened to me. Oh, wow. 
Yes. That's incredible. It was a thousand dollars. What? Yes. <laughs> Somebody just mailed me a thousand dollars. And I'm not gonna say like when or where or who, but it was like it was really perfect timing. Like it was a weird situation of like of finances and needing some like needing that and not knowing that I needed it. And then it came in the mail and I was like, oh my goodness. And I just want to share that with whoever's listening because like God knows what's on your heart and he knows what you need. And like, it's nothing for God to send you what you need, you know, like if so it's true. money or a business or employees mm -hmm. or yeah. relationships, like whatever it is. So I want to ask you how God is using you at the bakery, but I feel like there's many directions that you could go in that. Is God like popping anything up to you about like how he's using you through making cakes? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like you could worship the Lord no yeah. matter what you're doing. Yeah. And sometimes people think you have to be sitting in a church on the ground with your knees, but you know, you can be worshiping the Lord while you're folding laundry. You can be worshiping the Lord while you're decorating a cake. Yeah. And I know um, for us many times when we're there pulling all nighters, doing things, you know, we are praying for people and um, thinking of um, ways we can bless others and the way God's blessed us. And, um, and I know several of our team do the same thing. Um, I know sometimes I'd pop in super early at the crack of dawn before going to um, drop my kids at school or, or to go to work and um, Christian music would be playing in the store and, and one of our bakers would be in there just worshiping the Lord while she was, you know, baking all the flavors. And so I feel like you can worship the Lord even just mixing things and yes. decorating things. And so um, I love that. I love that worship aspect of it. Um, but I also feel like God can use us to um, love on our people who work there and also love on our community. Mm -hmm. um, we're very near a hospital, um, Sacred Hearts, just basically across the street. And the number of families that have come in there and we just talk to them and ask mm -hmm. them questions about their life. And we've prayed with people before and um, loved on them. They've shared their stories about how their child is in the children's hospital across the street, maybe not doing so well, mm -hmm. or they just lost a loved one. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're there to buy cupcakes for the nurses taking care of their family members. Yeah. And so I just feel like, you know, we, we don't always maybe get it right, but we do want to honor the Lord and all we're doing with the store. And if there's ways we can love on people and encourage them during a difficult time, um, that's a blessing to our hearts too. And, you know, we feel like if God throws these, throws these people in our face to meet, yeah. um, to try to love on them in that way. So I feel like we're able to love on our team, love on some people in the community. Um, and then, you know, God just teaches us so many things like patience or <laughs> that's the worst one. <laughs> patience. It's not my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Refining is tough too. I'm just like, Lord, if you're going to refine me, make it private because I just, I just, I'm listening <laughs> like right now, actually you not have me fall on stage. That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> if, if you could just keep it here between you and I, I mean, people don't need to know. They really don't. Let's just, you know, Heavenly Father, have a conversation Absolutely. with your daughter here. <laughs> I mean, the, the, just, you know, thanking God for not humiliating us all the time when he could have I know. for things that we had no idea what Same. we were doing. So that's the thing about like, he led you to do something that you had no idea what you were doing. I mean, did God put it in your heart to like bake a long time ago? Yeah, or? I mean, I did have a background in baking for fun at home. Okay. And I did do um, showers and, and parties and things um, years prior to yeah. that. And so I understood that. Yeah. But I'm telling you, doing it at an actual bakery where you're making 20-something different flavors of cupcakes a day, cookies, um, cakes, decorating this, decorating that, it is a, such a different thing yeah. than when I was making a couple cakes at home on a weekend or cupcakes for something. It, it was a totally different scale of things and a totally different process. So um, I remember the first time we kind of we're working through it. It was a bit overwhelming. And I was thinking, what did we get ourselves into? Yeah. How are we going to do this? Um, and, and thankfully, my husband is very much um, willing to learn anything. I mean, he probably barely even ate the stuff I baked at home. But once we bought the story, he's like, we're going to learn this and we're going to know it backwards and forwards. And he's yeah. actually our best baker at the store. No way. <laughs> yes. That it's, is wild. I know he's so good. His cupcakes look perfect. And um, he can do the entire morning baking shift in four hours without breaking a sweat. 
the entire so there's a morning ship okay mm-hmm. so, and there's 20 flavors 20 flavors at least a day yeah. no way and it's four hours minimum to yes. make all that stuff <laughs> yes and that's if you're fast but it's um it's a lot of work to do that and you're making all the flavors then you have to have all the different frostings for each one yeah and um, and then decorate them and then try to be consistent each day and they're they so good like. I love the pina colada and the, uh, I had that one yesterday. The wedding cake is really good. Wedding is my favorite. Why is it so good? I just love it. Every year, you know, they'll say, what kind of flavor do you want for your birthday cake? And I'm like, wedding Wedding cake. You don't even have to ask me anymore. Just know wedding. Wedding. And how long have you and your husband been married? We've been married uh, 16 years. Six. Okay. Okay. So you have to tell everybody what y'all did last night. 16 years of marriage and they have a <laughs> tell everyone what you did last they, night. they have no not that <laughs> no, not oh, that uh, not so that. what what she means by that <laughs> no this is g-rated what she means by that <laughs> is uh <laughs> Because we're trying to think outside the box and this oh economy God. has just really kicked our butts at yeah. the store. And um, so we're trying to think outside the box and be creative yes. on things that maybe we can do at Small Cakes to bring in new customers and new friends there. Um, and I've always thought it would be so much fun to do a blindfold decorating, con- like a blindfold cake decorating yeah. class. Okay, class, not a contest. I was trying so, to make it competitive. I'm like, who won? Well, we turned it into a contest last yes. night, I feel yes. like, which was also fun. Yeah. But it was so cute. So we had four couples come. Um, one mm. of them was my parents. And, and then we had some friends. And then my sister and her husband did it as well. And we just wanted to do kind of like a mock of how would this work? What we, what could we do to make it better when we do it for customers and that mm. sort of thing? And it was so cute because we realized at the end of it that this is actually like they're getting marriage counseling. Yeah. And they're decorating a cake. Yes. Because they, one person would be blindfolded while they're explaining to the other person how to decorate it. Yes. Your parents were the cutest, oh by the goodness. way. I, I thought that was so cute. Patience. I mean, if I <laughs> learned anything from last night, it was listening and watching your parents decorate that cake. They decorated it so slow, but your dad's <laughs> words were like calm and they were like, <laughs> oh, nope, you're going off the cake. You're decorating the table. You're you're on the table. You're still on the table. Let's go back to the cake. <laughs> she would move. It was back so to the cute. Cake. But it was so cute. I never thought of it being like sort of marriage counseling when yeah. on teaching people how to communicate well until exactly. our friends, you know, Eric and Tanya were talking about that. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we need to market this as like marriage counseling and an activity. Exactly. <laughs> we have like 16 years of marriage. Y'all have a great marriage and y'all can like, you know, really encourage some couples about decorating cakes and like communication and being there for each other. And we're a team and look at this cake. And, and it's a wedding cake and flavor. And it was a wedding cake flavor. Does it have to be a wedding cake it flavor? It does not. It could be any flavor. But, but I'm just, did wedding. but oh. I think the wedding cake was That's a my, bonus. It's so good. It was so good, but also it like reunites people. It's like, oh, wedding cake, decorating, communication. And also the funniest thing, I'm like, okay, so who won? Like who won this? I need to know like who won was it, you know, da, da, da. And they're like, no, everybody wins. We're all taking a cake home. (laughs) Everyone gets a trophy. Everyone gets a trophy. (laughs) I mean, I would rather have a cake than a trophy. I mean, oh yeah. Right. You can actually enjoy it. Exactly. You can, yeah, enjoy it. It's not going to collect dust and then. Yeah, it's delicious. Okay, so what Bible verse is encouraging you in this season? It, it's so hard to even pick one. I love so many right now. Um, one of the ones that's kind of our family verse is Micah 6, 8. He has told you, oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And we love that one so much as our family verse. Um, and then also another one I'm really enjoying is um, Matthew five sixteen, which says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven, yes. which I also really love because no matter what we're doing at the end of the day the goal is to be a light yes. for christ and i actually really love your water hoodies yes. uh, you know so much yes. and i know you have one that has a phrase on the back that says light seeker yes and i think about that as what we want for our store you know we yeah. want it to be we want to be all light seekers for christ but we also want to be shining that light for Christ yes, and um, everything that we do. And so, like I said, whether it's the laundry, whether it's yeah. the dishes, whether it's making cakes, 
um, whether it's serving our children or our neighbors, we want to be a light um, for Christ. So yeah. we love that verse too, because at the end of the day, we want to glorify our Father in heaven. Mm-hmm. So those are some that have been um, speaking to my heart lately. So you talked about like shining a light for Christ in in your position of like being in a sweet shop. Like, okay, come on, y'all. Like, I feel, I mean, I feel like it'd be easy to broadcast this love in a bakery because you're like, I'm literally surrounded by sweets, but life is hard. Like what you were saying and like focusing on the main thing, like no matter your position, whatever it is, just glorify God in whatever he has asked you to do that day. You know, working in a bakery, doing whatever God has asked you to do. I mean, we've talked about this many times with my sister and and my husband and brother-in-law. Um, you know, at the beginning of this, people thought we were even crazy for going in business together because people recommend you don't do business, you know, with your family. But at the very beginning, we were like, look, none of us are, are going to care about, um, you know, any financial aspects of this. I don't mean like we don't care, care, but we don't care about anything more than our relationship here with each other and with the Lord. And so I feel like that's why we've been able to work so well together for so long without any controversy. And we've also realized too, you know, whether God gave us this business or whether he takes it away, we are still gonna worship the Lord because we don't know what the future brings on it. So, and at the end of the day, that's, that's what it's all about is worshiping the Lord, showing people Christ and whether it's at our bakery or whether it's in our kitchens or whether it's in our church, you know, that's what we want to do at the end of the day. Yes. Okay. There's a scripture. I gotta, I gotta Google it really quick. First Corinthians 10 31. And this is said in the introduction by Ginger DeVries too. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God, Mm -hmm. like whatever it is. And um, I used to work at the Floribama, which is a world famous beach bar. Mm-hmm. And I saw, and that was like one of the reasons why I started this podcast is I saw the bartenders and like the impact that they had on the routine customers' lives of like speaking life to them. Like no matter your position, you know, if you're dealing drugs, stop that. No, no boy, no, <laughs> no, don't deal, don't do illegal things, but in the position, the job, the legal job that God has you in, do that thing to the glory of the Lord. Like let the Lord use you, like decrease yourself and whatever you're trying to accomplish or whatever, and let the Lord use you by broadcasting him. And this is something that, and I don't know if we want to dive into this here, but it's something that as, you know, you mentioned water hoodie earlier, that is something, it's a new business for our family. I'm consistently like, the Lord is my strength. God is my, me, not me strength. God, me strength. <laughs> and I, I do feel like you you really do exemplify Christ's love and how you're doing that. And I feel like you really are trying to show um, that it's about Jesus. Yeah. You know, you're enjoying having this business and it's fun. And it's a great thing to show your kids how to make a living and and do some fun things. But I feel like every post you do, I see Jesus in it because you're just such a bright light yourself. And um, I love it so much. My boys love those hoodies and we have two of each so far i think yes, you do <laughs> and then you, you just came out with the new blues one and i, I love it so much yes yes so, uh, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna spend all my small kids money at um, a small water kids. hoodie <laughs> water hoodie <laughs> thank you very Beth. you're a huge encouragement um but yeah thank you for sharing what you did and um the scripture that's encouraging you in the season the micah 6 8 scripture you do have a son named name micah Micah. Yeah. Is that from that scripture? You know, I, I, I don't think it was actually, but that's a good thought. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's like a really good prayer to pray over Micah. Is yeah. Micah 6 a Well, like, you know, any other scriptures are great to pray over our children, but that's like really prophetic for him. It is actually. Yeah. Well, what happened was a few years ago, my mom um, was asking each of us, uh, her kids, what's y'all's family verse and what verse do y'all love the most right now? And Josh and I were talking and he's like, I really like the Micah 6 8 one. But we already had the twins at that point. So I think that came after the Really? It. Yeah. So it's like your family verse. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You have a family verse. I know. Well, we didn't until my mom's like, what's your family verse? I'm like, oh, I guess, oh, we don't have one. I guess we, we don't need have to one. come up with one. <laughs> I, we need a family verse too. So we too. talked about several yeah. verses and then, yeah, we went with that one. And I actually have a, um, a metal frame of it on my wall um, at our living room. Oh, I love I it. I love that. 
This is so inspiring. If you don't have a family verse, get one today. <laughs> get one today. <laughs> and there is no cost. It's free. It's, it's $0. Zero dollars. Zero dollars. Zero dollars. You can type even, it's amazing now with Google and all the things. You can just type in, um, you know, some words that are the Lord speaking to you or topics. Yes. What you want for your family. Um, my mom has this um, verse that she absolutely, well, it's not a verse. It's a whole chapter um, that she has memorized for our family. And at the end, it talks about that they may know him and talking about their prayer for us is that we will all, including our kids, just know Christ. Amen. That's so good. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to share? I mean, ways to follow you, connect, buy your cakes, go to the store, check it out, get we a birthday cake. We would love that. We yes. Would, we wouldn't mind that at all. We would love that. <laughs> yeah. We would love your prayers for our store and yes. um, that we would use it for God's glory and um, for our family and for Water Hoodie because we love those too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. So as you're talking, this is the Lord, like lit, this, the Lord mic drops every single podcast and I always belly laugh. It's just like, when is it going to happen? When is the belly laugh? And when's the mic drop? I think this might be it. So I'm organizing my office before you get here. And, uh, we moved around some things in our office to make it more clean and functional and all that stuff. So one of the things that we have is a plumb line. And we've talked about this in earlier episodes, but um, Zechariah 4.10, it says, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand, which I said that wrong, but this is a plumb line like in front of you right here. This is a plumb line. And this, so it's like a weighted thing and it hangs on a long string and it goes on I've the ceiling. I've never seen one of those before. I, well, I'm going to hang it to the ceiling. I was doing that right before you came in today. I'm like, I got to hang this thing up. It's in the way. But right now it's in the middle of the floor and it's orange. And so I just, for whoever's listening, pay attention, <laughs> wake up. Um, whatever the Lord has you doing, the small thing or the small beginning or whatever it is, don't despise it. Um, the Lord is with you. He, God is in all things. Uh, God is in all things. Tune into him. Hear what he's trying to tell you. And, and just do the next right thing, right? Like do the next thing that the Lord is asking you to do. So that's my prayer for, for your business, Mary Beth. Thank you. Um, as y'all are starting this new couples or it doesn't have to be couples, but this new party where you're decorating cakes and having a blast and de decorating cakes and getting to take cake home and all that fun stuff that the Lord just bless it and keep it and make his face shine upon you and give y'all peace. Boom. Love it. Love you. you. Um, what, like your Instagram and website and all that jazz. What is it? How it's, do we connect? Yes. Oh, on Instagram, it's at Small Cakes Pensacola. And on Facebook, it's Small Cakes Pensacola, a cupcakery and creamery. Nice. Okay. We will put that, all of everything that you've mentioned in the description of this podcast. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I just had so much fun hanging out with you this morning. And I feel like we should do this every week. I know it is really fun. Okay. So and I love your air conditioner. It's awesome. Yes. The mini split is what's up. Mr. Cool shout out. So here's the thing. And I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, you know what? In these episodes, I don't want them to just be episodes of like, cause like we do have like great connections. Like from this, I know some things that I can encourage you with for the next couple of weeks, even months. I could check in and like say, Hey, I'm praying for your business for these things. What's the Lord showing you? Like I can have this connection. My prayer for you who's listening is that you go out and make these connections in your community. Yes. Whether that be at a coffee shop, at a cupcake place, uh, I in guess office job. Yes. Anywhere. Thank you. Anywhere. But like you ask people like, how is God moving in your life? What's he showing you? What Bible verse is encouraging you in the season? How is God using you? Like, I don't want these conversations to just be, you listening to two women talk about the Lord, which is great because the enemy will be defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. But like invite someone to go work out or walk today and ask them questions. And then you listen and they listen and you talk and you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I feel like, especially with so much social media out there, we think people aren't lonely oh, and yeah. craving yeah. Um, Christian friends. Right. And they're so craving that and people are way more lonely than we realize because oh, yeah. I've been really surprised sometimes I talk to people that I think must be just so busy and must be this and that and they were just just so moved and touched and and you know people are feeling very lonely and okay. empty yes so you invited me to this cupcake thing yeah last night and I literally went because the Lord put it on my heart 
and he, I think the Lord put it on my heart of like, you need this Christian community. Like you need connection with my people. Like just go to the cupcake thing or the cake thing, you know? And that right there, like for the, that's my prayer for the next generation is that because they are so much more into, like they know social media so much better than mm-hmm. us. <laughs> like, and the iron sharpens iron is such a true thing. And yes. you know, we need that. <laughs> We need that. And it's just Instagram and Facebook is not enough. It's not connection. No, it's we have isolating. to use it. We have businesses. We have to be on it a good bit. We have yes. to use it. Um, but that face to face is just irreplaceable. It really is. So yeah, I pray that for you who's listening to just tune in to what the Lord's showing you. And if, so, and if God put a person, you know, a face that he wants you to connect with, like I always say, girls with girls, guys with guys kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, go ask a girlfriend to coffee or lunch or go ask if you're a guy, like ask a dude to lunch or whatever dudes do. I don't know. Work out, go bowling. What do guys do? Go to Bass Pro Shop? (laughs) Golf. Let's go golf. Let's go golf. Let's go to the beach. Yeah. Let's go surf. Let's do that. I'm all about that. Just like do something bold, not for your glory, but for God's glory to like iron sharpens iron, like you Mm -hmm. said, because it really does move mountains. Okay. This is the last thing I'm going to say. This is it. So I was listening to a Christine Kane podcast today, and she was saying that the Lord is sustaining her business. Like it's all about, because she has the A21. It's a ministry, but it's like a, a nonprofit where they uh, help people with uh, get out of human trafficking. So they save sex trafficked survivors. That's what they do. Oh, awesome. Right. Huge ministry, right? All over the world. And she was saying, she's like, I'm walking on water every day because I have to have faith or I will sink. Like me will sink. I will sink. I will go down if I don't have faith in God. And that's one of our first designs for water walker. And that, I mean, that's how I feel in business. Like if I don't have faith in God to do what he's going to do, like know that he's going to provide, mm-hmm. like I'm sinking. I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm done. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> sinking ships. It's over (laughs) yes so that's uh as we just wrap up let's pray and um lord father god thank you so much for mary beth and her business of small cakes thank you for giving us faith in you and um, planting seeds in our life to do fun things at our adventures like cupcake shops and bakeries and um to do things with you every day and know that we are learning your ways your patience your kindness your goodness all your fruits of the spirit. Um, Lord, just use us for your glory. I pray for the person listening. If they don't know about you, if they don't know about your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross to save us from our sins so that we can live an abundant life with you. And we're expectant on Jesus. He's coming back. So there is an expectancy of, of his return. And Lord, I just pray that they learn more about you today, that they're saved by your grace through faith. Okay. Through faith in you and that they get plugged into a local Bible believing church in their community. And Lord, I just pray again for uh, Mary Beth and her family and Naomi as they are working in this business and through this business to serve your kingdom. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hey everyone, it's Erica with Glassy Day Studio, where we believe every broken, discarded, and disrupted thing will be reclaimed, restored, and redeemed by the one who created and calms the waves. Glassy Day jewelry is shaped from recycled surfboard resin, and each design is named after a woman in the Bible. And 10% of every purchase supports foster care ministries. Check it out at glassydaystudio.com. And thanks for listening. And if this episode has drawn you closer to Christ, please share it with your friends and family or even one person that might find encouragement in the message and a deeper relationship with Christ. God bless and have a great week.
Hey there, Asha Juno here. I am an imperfect girl with imperfect faith in the perfectly faithful God. And that has changed everything for me. My journey of getting to know God looked like God taking what I thought would surely kill me and using it to bring me all the way to life. You can read or listen to the whole story in my book, This Hope, A Journey of Getting to Know God, available right now on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. This is amazing.